If AI can only finish 2.5% of freelance projects, why did companies attribute 31,000 layoffs to AI just last month? It's the highest number for October layoffs in 22 years. Now the headlines tell one story, but the data tells another. I want to show you both. I run a seven figure AI powered business. I know what these tools can actually do and how to get the best out of them. So last week, I'm helping a startup with an investor pitch. They used Claude, the supposed world leader of frontier models to build their revenue projections. Four columns, basic math, one column for each revenue line of business. But the math was wrong. The AI couldn't accurately add four numbers together to calculate the total. Now, if this model can't handle basic addition in a high stakes pitch, how could it possibly replace a full-time analyst? Now, this isn't theory. This is the reality of where the AI tech is at right now. And researchers are finding that this isn't just a fluke. Scale AI and the Center for AI Safety recently released the Remote Labor Index. They gave AI agents 240 real-world projects from Upwork, software design, data analysis, and regular design. The results? The top AI agent completed only 2.5% of the project to an acceptable standard. Out of roughly $144,000 worth of work, this AI, Manus, earned just $1,720. AI succeeds at simple one-step creative generation, like writing a basic report, but it struggles with multi-step instructions and precision, the things that are actually important for a professional job. Now you might be thinking that freelance projects aren't the same as corporate jobs and that's fair, but these are the same kinds of tasks companies claim AI is handling internally. If AI can't complete a freelance data analysis project to an acceptable standard, why would it suddenly be able to replace the analyst doing similar work on a full-time basis? So if AI is only succeeding with 2.5% of these projects, why are we seeing these layoff numbers blamed on AI. Economists at MIT have a compelling explanation for this. They found that automation's impact on your career depends entirely on which tasks get automated. London black cab drivers have to pass something called the knowledge. This is considered one of the hardest tests in the world. To do it, they have to memorize 25,000 streets, 320 routes, and thousands of landmarks, hospitals, hotels, theaters, tiny statues, and random walls, all within a six mile radius of Charing Cross. I'm not British, I probably pronounced that wrong. Anyway, it takes three to four years of full-time study. The dropout rate is 70%. That means seven out of 10 people who start this never successfully finish it. This test has been compared to getting a law degree or a medical degree. And when you pass, you get what's called a green badge. You can be one of the elite cab drivers in the world, guaranteed a solid middle-class income. Then GPS showed up and suddenly anyone with a phone could navigate nearly as well as someone who had dedicated years of their life to passing the knowledge. This expert task was automated. The barrier to entry dropped and wages follow. Now let's look at bookkeepers. So computers took over their routine calculations starting in 1980 and going all the way through 2018. During that time, employment fell for bookkeeping, but wages rose over 40%, accounting for inflation. The technology handled the boring stuff, making the remaining human expertise more valuable. So the question for you is this, is AI automating your expert value or your boring routine? Now, currently, two of the most influential people in tech disagree on this answer. Dario Amadai, the CEO of Anthropic, that's the company that makes Claude, he's predicting that AI could replace 50% of entry-level jobs within just five years. Amadai suggested unemployment could hit 10, even 20% as a result of this. Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, that's the company that makes the chips powering almost all of this, the most valuable company in the world currently, he was asked about Amadei's prediction at Viva Tech 2025 in Paris. His response? I pretty much disagree with almost everything he says. So Huang used farming as an example. Mechanization made humans massively more productive at raising crops, but it didn't mean that humans ran out of work. It just meant we found new things to do. He argues that as long as there's still something left to build or something left to solve, Basically, as long as the world still has new ideas, 
we're not going to run out of jobs. We're just going to be able to do more. So you have the guy building the models saying half of entry level jobs are going to vanish. And you have the guy building the hardware saying, well, that's only true if we stop wanting progress. So back to the November jobs report. When you look at the October layoffs, AI was cited as the second leading cause, but many experts suggest that AI is often used as a convenient explanation for broader restructuring or cost cutting. So let me show you the Challenger Gray and Christmas report that everyone is citing, blaming AI for destroying jobs. AI was cited for 6,300 cuts in November. So far this year, AI is responsible for 55,000 layoff plans. Since 2023, AI has led to 71,683 job cut announcements. But let's look a little closer. So when you dig into who's actually getting cut, it's not entry level workers who are being replaced by AI. UPS cut 48,000 positions this year. 14,000 of those were management roles. UPS closed 93 buildings. Target's layoffs? Their own executives admit that it's merchandise quality issues and tariff pressure. That's not AI replace the junior analyst, that's restructuring, cost cutting, pandemic overhiring correction. Now, David Ator, an MIT economist who studied automation for over a decade, he put it this way. It's much easier for a company to say we're laying off workers because we're realizing AI related efficiencies than it is for companies to say we're laying people off because we're not that profitable or bloated or facing a slowing economic environment. In other words, AI makes a better press release, an easier story to sell than we made bad hiring decisions in 2021. Now, this is the actual Bureau of Labor Statistics report that was released in December for the November market, and it corrected October's to show this massive number of layoffs. We can scroll all the way to the bottom of the report to get to the data. This is the interesting stuff here. We wanna actually see the data. Okay, and this is what's fascinating. We can see goods are producing mining, and then we can see the month over month changes here. And what we see, one of the biggest numbers is in transportation and warehousing. Another one of the big numbers is in leisure and hospitality. These aren't AI related downturns. However, there is a real shift happening at the entry level. A Harvard study found that while companies are not doing mass layoffs, they are implementing a hiring freeze. This means that when a junior level employee leaves, they're just not being replaced. Instead, the senior expert is using AI to cover the gap. Now, honestly, I've seen this in my own agency. I use AI to handle tasks that formerly I would require a junior assistant. A subject matter expert that can run AI well can essentially do work that used to require a whole team. Now, the takeaway on this is clear. AI working alone is rarely effective. It fails 97.5% of the time, but an expert using AI is a real powerhouse. Now the people at risk aren't the ones using the tools. They're the ones whose primary value was doing the tasks that AI can now handle, like the London cab drivers, and who don't have the expertise to catch AI's frequent mistakes. So the real opportunity here is to become the expert who directs the AI rather than the assistant who gets replaced by it.